Hello, fifth graders. By now you have just finished chapter six and we're going to talk a little bit about characters and their relationships. By this point in the book, you have really gotten to know the main character in Bridge to Terabithia, that is Jess Arams. So today we'll work together to characterize some of Jess's relationships and we'll compare and contrast them. For this lesson, we're going to make a Venn diagram and compare and contrast Jess and Leslie's relationship with Jess and most of his family. I say the word most, of course, because Maybelle is a little bit different. Um, she just loves Jess so much, just worships everything he does. She thinks is amazing. And, um, and he's kind of picks on her a little bit, but lovingly like older siblings do. Do you do that to your younger siblings? Or if you have older brothers or sisters, do they pick on you? That's definitely what happens around the Moore household. But other than Maybell, for the rest of his family, um, you, we know that they don't have a great relationship at all. We know the older two siblings are super bratty, and we know his mom is no Mary Poppins, and we know dad is pretty distant. He doesn't hug Jess, and he generally doesn't do anything to go out of his way to build a relationship with his son. As I mentioned, one side of this Venn diagram is blue to represent Jess and Leslie. The other one is gonna be purple to represent Jess and most of his family. I underlined the first sentence in this chapter. Christmas was almost a month away, but at Jess's house, the girls were already obsessed with it. Now the girls, we're talking about the obnoxious older two, Brenda and Ellie. The girls are obsessed with Christmas, not because they want to have a beautiful time with their family and bake cookies together and everybody hug and share special memories. No. Why would Brenda and Ellie be obsessed with Christmas? To get stuff, of course. And then we find out later in this book that... Um, they both have boyfriends, so they're super excited about all the gossip that's going to be happening and, and the presents they'll be able to get for their boyfriends so they can show them off. None of this has anything to do with the spirit of Christmas. We might say then that Brenda and Ellie are kind of materialistic or even selfish. Look at this sentence right here. Don't you know Brenda? Ellie joined in. Jess ain't got no girlfriend. Um, toward the beginning of this book, when Jess first met Leslie, he noted that she was kind of a tomboy, so much so that he wasn't positive whether she was a boy or a girl. And of course here we've got it all italicized because they are sort of mocking her, saying that maybe she's a girl, maybe she's not. Thing we're going to put on this side of the Venn diagram um, for the relationship between Jess and his family is that they mock Jess. They don't encourage him or anything. We already knew that. And they mock his friend. So we'll put and Leslie. Later we find out that Jess is actually sad. I said it hurts his guts to realize that Brenda was his blood sister. He's literally hurt that he's related to Brenda instead of Leslie. So he feels like Leslie is family and he's bummed out that Brenda is actually family. We'll add a bullet point right here with his family saying, Jess, Doesn't feel close. Close to them. Sorry about the handwriting. Just doesn't feel close to them at all. Likewise, for the other half of that sentence that I underlined in blue, he was sad that Leslie's not related to him. 
So here we can say they have a close relationship or he, she feels like family. I wrote, they feel like family. Look down here a little bit further to the paragraph that starts with, he shook himself back to the source of his anger. I underlined this part in blue, which remember um, represents Jess and Leslie together. It would soon be Christmas and he had nothing to give Leslie. It was not that she would expect something expensive. It was that he needed to give her something as much as he needed to eat when he was hungry. Did you catch that? The sisters, Brenda and Ellie, were really mostly concerned with getting stuff, getting attention, getting presents. That helps me to know that they're pretty selfish. And wrote that on the purple side, that in this household, there's a lot of selfishness. However, looking at the relationship between Leslie and Jess, um, this doesn't look like selfishness at all. He was wanting to give something to Leslie. There's not a thing in here about wondering what Leslie would ever give him. He really didn't even have any reason to believe that Leslie would give him anything. And he didn't care. That wasn't his concern. He was more concerned with giving. And was she going to expect it? It was not that she would expect something expensive. So we knew she was not going to expect something, something expensive. Date the blue part of our Venn diagram to say instead of selfishness, they're more concerned about giving. More concerned about giving than receiving. He's really trying hard to think about a nice present. Here's something that I thought was interesting in the paragraph that starts with, so there was no money. I underline in blue, she being Leslie, she wouldn't laugh at him no matter what he gave her. So this helps us to know that before he ever even gave her a present, he already knew that she was going to react kindly, that she would never laugh at him, and that she would be grateful no matter what it is. So that tells me a couple of things about his relationship with Leslie. There seems to be trust in this relationship, and there seems to be kindness. Skip over here to the part where Jess jumps off the bus to go track down this little guy, Prince Tyrion. We find that Jess really wanted to get a present that Jess could be proud of. So I wrote over here that Jess wants to feel proud of giving. I underlined the next sentence in blue too because it really stood out to me. It said there was no mistaking the delight in Leslie's eyes. She really liked it. She had great gratitude or thankfulness. This, this relationship can be characterized with gratitude. Shortly after that, we find out what Leslie got Jess for Christmas. And it was a box of watercolors and paintbrushes and heavy art paper. We know Jess has always wanted that. We know his, his secret desire is to be an artist, that his secret love or hobby is art. His parents don't approve of that, especially his dad. But Leslie thought about what Jess I ran out of room, so I erased some of the top. You can keep going down here if you want. Um, squeeze some area. Or you can just listen from this point if you want. But we know that another characteristic in this relationship is thoughtfulness. Both characters really thought about what the perfect gift would be in giving to the other. A little further along, after he gives Prince Tyrion 
to Leslie and the dog is acting all crazy, flopping everywhere and peed on both of them. There's a lot of laughter. This sentence helped us. Uh, he wanted to tell her how proud and good she made him feel that the rest of Christmas didn't matter because today had been so good. So when Jess and Leslie are together, there's a lot of laughter and a lot of joy and really good feelings. So I'm going to write that in the blue section. I'm going to say that there's a lot of laughter. I'm going to say there's a lot of joy. And they lift each other up. Maybe we could say encouragement. I really loved right here in this sentence after um, Jess went home that that night, the glow of the afternoon stayed with them. Think about, think about glow. It's a warm, light feeling. We can tell that this is the, like the joy and the happiness stayed with them for the rest of the day. And then Christmas morning comes along. Jess wakes up in his own house, and let's find out what Christmas at the Aaron's house is like. We see he had received a racing car set, which he tried to run to please his father. Wait, what? What about Jess Aaron's made his dad think he wanted a race car? He's known Jess all his life. We've only known him for three, two or three weeks, and we know Jess isn't into race cars. So, so here in this depressing looking purple side of our Venn diagram, we're not going to put thoughtfulness. We're going to put the opposite of that, thoughtlessness. People aren't trying to think about how to make each other happy in this family. Well, it turns out that the race car set is broken anyway, and Dad is mad, and he's cursing, and he's kicking the whole thing over, calling it cheap junk, and throwing a temper tantrum. Don't get nothing for your money these days. So Dad's complaining, and we know that the whole house is tense, and everybody's angry. It's true throughout a large part of this book, so we're going to put tense. There's, there's a lot of tension. And there's a lot of anger. Well, Merry Christmas to you too, Dad. We've got Joyce Ann screaming. Brenda's jealous. Ellie's bragging. She's pouting about not getting the right socks. Mom's yelling. She said that she favors Ellie over anybody else, even though, hello, Ellie's a brat and Jess is the one jumping up doing what he's supposed to do. And all of that text evidence supports the inference that we just made that, that in the Aaron's house, things are tense and they're angry. Thankfully, by the end of the chapter, we finish on a happy note. Leslie and Jess are back together to play. She's giggling and, and everybody's happy again. It says, it felt like Christmas again. So let's go ahead and do our assignment now. We're going to do a lot of comparing and contrasting today. Your first question is, compare and contrast two characters in the book. Be specific. Try to focus on their personalities, not just like their physical features. So two characters. You can create a Venn diagram of your own if you're doing this on paper, or you can list, um, just write it out in a list form if you're on paper. If you're doing a Google form, you can just list the answer. Number two, compare and contrast any two different relationships among the characters. Um, like our example was Jess and Leslie versus Jess and the rest of his family. And just like we did in number one, you can use a Venn diagram or you can just list it. Now you need to provide text evidence to support your claim. So number three, 
provide an example of text evidence from your book to support your idea about the first relationship, whichever one. Number four is just like number three, provide an example of text evidence to support your idea about the second relationship. And finally, number five, write a prediction that you made in this chapter or in a recent chapter that you read. And tell me if your prediction was correct. That's all I've got for today. I'll see you for chapter seven.